I just came across a fascinating article written by Kit Knightley that discusses what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, it's about that whistleblower talking about UFOs. The author's perspective on this is so interesting that it makes me want to share it with all of you. I made a few edits to the article to ensure it's safe to discuss here. If you want to read it in full, I've included the source at the end of the video to avoid it being flagged as a spam link by the system. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Late last week, it was widely reported that the United States government had recovered an intact alien spacecraft from a crash site. The supposed revelation comes from one David Grush, a former military intelligence agent who turned whistleblower and told the press that this supposed craft, distorted time and space, was bigger on the inside than the outside and made some rescue workers ill. Just today, he added more to the story, claiming the Vatican has known about this since World War II and they helped Mussolini retrieve the downed UFO. Now, assuming none of this is true, it's not an especially noteworthy incident in and of itself. After all fringe figures coming forward claiming to be whistleblowers does happen, and they often tell ludicrous stories with no supporting evidence. These can occur organically or be staged by agencies of the state, and either way, the press is always happy to give them air, because a, they are distracting, and b, they discredit real conspiracy theories by association. But that's not what appears to be going on here. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. For starters, Grush wasn't just given space in the media, he was given at least a small amount of credence by them. They allowed him to talk without mockery or even much questioning. Corporate fact-checkers seem to have missed a gim here, don't they? More than that, the UFO PSYOP didn't even start with Grush. The Biden administration was actively feeding the UFO story for months before he came forward. In June 2021, the US intelligence community released a report claiming it knew about unknown flying objects in US airspace. In January of this year, the Pentagon released files claiming they knew about 247 unidentified aerial phenomena in U.S. airspace in 2021 alone. Then in February, Biden announced a new task force to study these UFOs. What's noteworthy here is the way the press have picked up the UFO ball and really run with it. It's everywhere and, again, not in the high idiots believe in aliens way. They are actually taking it seriously or at least pretending to. And, again, this attitude predates the whistleblower. In February, The Guardian ran an opinion piece from the head of the British UFO Research Association, headlined most UFOs, like the Chinese spy balloon, can be explained away, but what about the other 2%? Then, in April, Live Science asked simply, are aliens real? Later that month, it was revealed that six different UFO whistleblowers had already spoken to members of Congress, presumably Grosh was one of these six, the other five remain unnamed. In May, the journal Popular Mechanics published a piece headlined Six Solid Reasons to Actually Believe in Aliens. Later that month, NASA's UFO Task Force released its findings publicly. Then, would you believe it, the day after Grush first published his claims, there was a UFO crash in Las Vegas, Nevada, which made international headlines. And the day after that, The Hill reported that inside sources claimed that UFO information was inappropriately withheld from Congress. Today the independent endeavors to answer the question that should be on everyone's lips, why everyone is talking about UFO sightings, even though there is still no hard evidence, while well, Fox News is hosting interviews with Navy pilots, discussing credible claims of UFO sightings, and calling them a daily occurrence. Even voices from the alternative right conservative sphere, people who you would expect to be somewhat skeptical, have climbed on this bandwagon. The refrain is that these headlines reflect the US admitting something they previously denied, or that this is leaking out against the wishes of the government or the globalists who control said government. This is nonsense. Governments don't admit anything. What governments do is use the language of admission to seed narratives. 
Never has this been more obvious than right now. Consider that Grush has already been allowed to testify in front of the House of Representatives, a privilege never afforded to any serious truther. Consider also that Mr. Grush's former lawyer was Charles McCullough, the first ever Senate-appointed Inspector General of the U.S. Intelligence Services from 2010 to 2017. He's being given the biggest platform in the country, well represented by former intelligence officials. Is that how you treat a whistleblower who is embarrassing you or endangering secret plans? No, it's how you treat an asset who is part of a story you want the public to hear. Clearly, this is a narrative rollout. The real question is. Why? And, honestly, I have absolutely no idea. A distraction maybe, but it's a weird card to play when we already have climate change and a special military operation ongoing. No, the distraction argument doesn't really hold water, but neither do the standard explanations of money or power. What legislation can UFOs force through? Who could seriously try and levy an alien defense tax? It's possible Grush is a s or of the type we are all familiar with, who will ultimately self-destruct and be shown to be a charlatan, along with other conspiracy theorists. Thus, making truth movements look foolish and humiliating anyone who endorsed or believed him. But even that's a stretch right now, given the sheer amount of mainstream endorsement he's got already. There's only one other angle I could possibly think of, but it's pretty out there. In the Alan Moore graphic novel, Watchmen, spoiler warning I guess, the villain's master plan is to end the Cold War and save humanity by staging an attack on Earth by a pan-dimensional alien life form. His theory is that proving aliens exist and mean us harm will unite the world against a common threat and prevent the US and USSR nuking us all into oblivion. Given the current level of globalist insanity, can we totally rule out that some WEF focus group has wargamed that idea and decided it might work? Would it actually work? Who knows? The world stopped making sense a long time ago. Do alien life forms exist? Have they been coming here and crashing their spaceships for the past 70 years or more? I don't know, but I'm fairly doubtful. But I do know that, true or not, it would never be in the news if it wasn't serving a purpose. And I know that basing any of your opinions or beliefs around what the US government or any government tells you is both irrational and historically illiterate. Governments all over the world might suddenly claim that aliens are real. But how far will they take this story? I don't know, but I will leave you with this. Early this month, CD staged an exercise where they mimicked an alien transmission to Earth from Mars. Highly noteworthy, given the historical power of exercises to predict the future. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.